Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, Adobe updated Lightroom from version 9.1 to 9.2. In this video, we're going to talk about what's new. Adobe is sending out this update in a systematic way to all of their customers. So if you have not received it, you should receive it very soon. If you'd like to try to force the issue and receive it right away, what you can do is open up the Creative Cloud app. Go to the left-hand panel where it says Updates, click on that, and see if the update is there. Hopefully it's there. If not, check for updates. To do that, click on these three little dots and then go down to Check for Updates. Hopefully they show up. Now, if they still don't show up, what you could try to do is to sign out of the Creative Cloud and then sign back in. To sign out of the Creative Cloud, click on your user badge, that's this little circle right here, and then sign out, and then try signing back in, and then check for updates again, and hopefully they'll show up. Now, once you have it updated, you'll find that if you share the opinion of mine that uh, there's not, it's not really that significant of, of an update. Uh, there are some, of course, bug fixes and there are new lens profiles and camera profiles added as there is in every update. But beyond that, there really isn't anything new added. There's just some changes and enhancements to what was already there. Now, Adobe has a web page where they talk about everything that was added to this version of Lightroom. And I'm going to go right in order from that web page. And I'll have that page linked in the description below this video. Now, the first thing that they've changed, they have improved raw develop settings. You may have noticed that when you import images, raw images into Lightroom, Lightroom does some default processing to it. Most often, uh, in the detail tab, it will add a default amount of sharpening and a default amount of noise reduction. For some cameras, it actually will do more. For example, for my, my Nikon Z6, it added a default amount of contrast and a default amount of saturation, as well as a default amount of sharpening and noise reduction. And I didn't like it. And I actually did a video in the past with previous versions of Lightroom. You could kind of zero everything out. You could go to the basic tab and change your contrast default from whatever it was. I think it was like plus 15 change it to zero, change saturation to zero, then go to the detail tab and put sharpening to zero and the color and luminance noise reduction to zero. Then what you would do is you would hold the alt or option key. It's alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And when you did that on previous versions of Lightroom, where it says reset right here, that would change into default. And you would click on that and the little box would pop up and it would ask you, do you want whatever settings you just set over here to be the defaults for all future images that get imported into Lightroom? And you'd of course say yes. Now then, whenever I imported images for my Nikon Z6, contrast was at zero, uh, saturation was at zero, uh, sharpening and noise reductions were all at zero for all future imports. Now, granted, that's not very obvious. You had to hold that alter option key in, and then this reset button would change to defaults. And people didn't really know that. And I actually did videos explaining how to do that. Well, it doesn't work that way anymore. What you need to do now is go to your preferences um, at, or preferences in Lightroom. To do that, if you have a Mac, go to Lightroom Classic menu. If you have a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And once you open up Preferences, go to the Presets tab. And you'll notice right at the top now it says Raw Defaults. And the first thing it actually is asking you to do is basically pick a profile. By default, when you import images into Lightroom, if it's a color image, it's going to use the Adobe Color Profile. So that's the Adobe Default Profile. If it's a black and white image, it's going to use the Adobe Monochrome Profile. So those are the defaults. But let's just say you have a Canon camera and you're shooting inside of the camera and you're using the Canon landscape profile in the camera. And you want to uh, 
keep that profile throughout your processing, what you would then do is just use camera settings. So now it's going to keep in this instance, Canon landscape profile, and you'll, uh, all the images you always import from that Canon camera is going to have that uh, profile or any other camera. Let's say you also own a Fuji camera, whatever camera setting you have inside of that camera for profile. It's so if you're using a Fuji Velvia um, film simulation, that's actually a profile. It will keep that when you import it. Now, if you don't want to use either of those, you could you could instead use a develop preset. And this will actually process your image. It's going to do all the processing that the preset commands. So you could do that as well. You then can further narrow this down by the camera model. So let's say I always use my Fuji camera and I always shoot in um, classic Chrome, all right? So I would uh, then go to my Fu Fuji X-T3 and I want it to always do the camera settings for that camera. So I could then go here, do camera settings. And now uh, for my Fuji X-T3, it's always going to do the camera settings, whatever I have there. Now let's pretend I had more than one Fujifilm X-T3. I could narrow it down by serial number. So I could just have a specific one uh, do it for the camera settings and then the other X-T3 do it for, let's say, the Adobe settings. Now where this differs from the old way, besides it being more obvious, is in the old way I could come in here and I could zero everything out and then use that as the default. This way I really can't zero anything out. What I have to do is create a preset. A preset with everything zeroed out and then I would go here to preset and use that preset as my import preset, my import develop preset for, in my case, it would be the Nikon Z6 because I don't like it to add that default amount of, um, you know, uh, saturation and everything else that it was adding. So I could change that as well. So hope that made sense. Uh, so they've made it a little more obvious, obviously. Uh, it's up here now under the presets tab. So hopefully that works for you. Now, beyond that, they've added a uh, PSB file support. So you now could import catalog and edit large document format PSB files in Lightroom Classic. Um, it supports documents up to 65,000 pixels on the long edge and a maximum dimension of 512 megapixels. And you're going to have to use Camera Raw 12.2 uh, to do this. So when you update Lightroom to 9.2, you'll also be updating, it's automatic, you'll also be updating uh, Camera Raw to 12.2. Now, um, it then going along that web page I mentioned, which will be listed below, they're now mentioning there's new support for cameras and lenses, and they have links to show you what camera models and lens profiles have been added to this uh, edition of Lightroom Classic 9.2. Now they have uh, the ability now you could, from inside of Lightroom, choose the monitor for a secondary window. So if you're using more than one monitor on your system, in the past you would have to go to uh, your settings in Windows or in uh, your Mac settings and specify where Lightroom, which display Lightroom would be displayed on. Well, you now could do that from inside a Lightroom. Again, you would go to Preferences and you would go over to Display. And now I only have one monitor on this system, so it's only showing one. But if you had multiple monitors, you would then click on the monitor that you want Lightroom to display on. So you'd be all set there. Now, uh, they've added improvements to Auto Sync. Um, specifically, uh, let's say you have a number of images and I have a number of images here and I want to use auto sync. What I would do is I'd click on the first image, the image that's displayed. Then I would click on the last image while holding in the shift key. So they're all selected down here in the film strip. Then what I would do is go up to settings and then I would go down to enable auto sync. Now, when I do that, any adjustments I do to the first image will get carried over to all the images. And in the past, you didn't necessarily 
know that that was happening because it wasn't obvious. So what they're doing now is they've made the auto sync button. They've changed the color and tone of it so that it stands out, so that you know that you're actually auto syncing these adjustments across all the images. Also, what they've done is when you do make an adjustment, let's say I'll just move a slider, a little uh, message will pop up letting you know that you've made an adjustment and it will pop up on everything you do. So every time you move a slider, that message pops up. So it's telling you you're syncing this across, in this case, six images so that you know you're doing it. Now you can turn this kind of warning system off. You still could auto sync, but if you want it to be like it used to be, if you want to do that, go back to preferences again. And I believe it's under the interface tab and it's down here. Show auto, show auto sync notifications. Click that off. You notice as soon as I click that off, auto sync is still on, but it's not a different color and tone any longer. Also, when I move an adjustment, you're not getting the warning or the message coming up any longer. So personally, I think I'll leave that on. I don't really auto sync very often but maybe I accidentally hit something and I want to know it's on. Now, of course, you don't have to go up to settings to enable it uh, in the future. If you just want to enable it from here, you could do it with this little button. So just select all the images in the film strip you want to auto sync and then use that little toggle switch right there and you'll be able to enable it and turn it off and on. So um, that's another kind of feature that was always there. They just kind of enhanced it a little bit. Okay, they've added support for Photoshop Elements 2020. With this release, you can now import Photoshop Elements 2020 catalog into Lightroom Classic. GPU accelerated editing for lens corrections and transform. So now when you do lens corrections or any transform adjustments, it's going to use the GPU for those adjustments. So that should speed that up. E-GPU empower, empowered enhanced details for Mac OS 10.15 Catalina. So if you have a Mac running the Catalina operating system and you do enhance details, I think enhance details under photo. Yeah, right there. Uh, so if you do any enhanced details, you may remember that takes a very long time uh, to do it. So now if you're running a Mac with Catalina, that should go a little bit faster. And that's really everything in this update. As I mentioned, in my opinion, it's not very significant. They've taken a couple features that were already there, most specifically that improved uh, raw default settings and that auto sync. And they've just changed it uh, so that in the case of both of them, they're a little more obvious. You could find it now in preferences as far as the raw default settings are concerned. And you could actually see uh, the auto sync a little more obvious in this version. So that's it for this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.